And joining me now is Secretary of State John Kerry, who is in Luxembourg on his way to Brussels. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with the attempted coup in Turkey. More than 200 people have been killed since the uprising began. Operations at the U.S. Air Base there have been halted. Power has been cut. Uh, our troops there are operating off of military generators. Five military facilities in Turkey have been placed at the highest alert level. This seems to show a huge level of disrespect. Who is responsible for this? Is it Erdogan? Uh, Jake, we don't have all the details of what has happened with respect to the coup. What we do know is this. Uh, I talked three times yesterday with the foreign minister of Turkey. They assure me that there will be no interruption of our counter-ISIL efforts. It is a fact that there were some difficulties at Insulik, but apparently uh, there may have been some refueling that took place with the Turkish Air Force with planes that were flying in the coup itself. And I think that has something to do with what's taken place there. It's not focused on us. Uh, they have absolutely assured us of their commitment to the fight against Daesh. They're uh, their foreign minister will be coming to Washington with their defense minister in three days for a major conference that we have with 45 countries, foreign ministers, defense ministers, to keep pushing forward on the strategy against Daesh. So, Jake, I expect that, uh, uh, you know, operations will get back to normal very quickly, but we don't know the details of the coup. And I, I think the Turkish government itself is trying to figure out the full measure of who was involved and how. Has this affected the fight against ISIS, or as you call it, Daesh? No, it has not. According to our commanders, there may have been a minor you know, delay here or there or something, but it has not affected the fundamental direction or commitment to the fight. As you know, on Saturday, uh, the president of Turkey, Erdogan, demanded that the U.S. <laughs> arrest or hand over one of his enemies, uh, Fahula Gulen, the person he is holding responsible for this coup, who, who's living in self-imposed exile in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, is the U.S. going to comply with this demand for extradition? Well, first of all, we have not had a formal request for extradition. That has to come in a formal package. It has to come with documentation for the request and go to the Justice Department, and we will deal with it. I made it very, very clear to the foreign minister of Turkey yesterday. The United States is not harboring anybody. We're not preventing anything from happening. We've never had a formal request for extradition. And we have always said, give us the evidence, show us the evidence. We need a solid legal foundation that meets the standard of extradition in order for our courts to approve such a request. So we're waiting for that. They tell us they are putting it together and will send it to us. But, but we think it's irresponsible to have accusations of American involvement uh, when we're simply waiting for their request, which we're absolutely prepared to act on if it meets the legal standard. Did U.S. intelligence have any idea that this attempted coup was about to happen? I don't think anybody's intelligence had uh, information, particularly the Turkish intelligence. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, this is, you know, the nature of a coup. Uh, you rarely have indicators that something's about to happen.